Forgive me, and my anger I seem to have marched us back outside again. Though it is probably best we leave the island altogether. I believe we've worn out our welcome, Yulmer. In any case, I've seen enough of the world's self-proclaimed capital city to convince me that our battle against the Sin Eaters will find few allies in Calusia. I will accompany you back to the Crystarium. We need to regroup and think on our new strategy anew. Kaishira, I've done you a grave disservice. You were hungry and desperate and I offered you a solution, without once considering the risks inherent to you in you accepting it. If I had but known the price you would pay, it would be made to pay. You gave me everything I needed to make your idea work. It was me who made a mess of things, not to you. But even after all the trouble I caused, you still stepped in and saved me. And now Lord Bothry wants us all dead. Why not come back with us to the Crystarium? I'm certain we can find work for you there if you are willing. No, that would just be me leaning on your kindness again. I need to do some thinking. Learn how to stand on my own two feet. <laughs> Very well. But you must promise you'll be careful. The Ilmorans may yet come looking for us. I'll keep my head down. Don't worry. And you take care too. Give me the chance to repay what you've done for me. Oh, Fanad. Lord and Lady Chai. What the blaze did you do? They have the entire city looking for you. I took a peek at your unfinished portrait, Alphanod. Now, I've had many a beautiful and striking picture painted for me, but there was something about your work. It was as if you had caught the very essence of our love and rendered it naked upon the canvas. It was bold, unflinching, and I adored it. Please, you must come back with us and finish what you began. I will speak with Lord Vothry and vouch for your character. I'm sure we could smooth him and smooth over it. Smooth over any hard feelings. Eh, no. I'm sorry, Lady Chai. There are more important matters to which I must attend. More important? What can be more important than enjoying the days we have left to us to the fullest? Pray press me no further. We are leaving. But I would not presume to take the garments you are so kind as to procure for me. One moment. <gasps> I wouldn't hear of it. Keep the clothes, you silly boy, and insist. And I shall make arrangements so that you can pass through the gate without causing a stir. I expect you to come and visit. I will return, I promise you that. The outrage I witnessed must not go unanswered. Next time we meet, I shall be better prepared to confront the corruption which hides behind the glittering facade. So going to Stiltide. I was thinking that this game seemed longer than normal, but I think it's just because I have things to do now, work and and a lot of family event stuff. Because my friend it hasn't even been two days open and he's already seventy-eight, probably seventy-nine by now. So it is possible to get to 80 in easily three days, maybe two. Thank you, my friend, for staying at my side through this whole sordid and lever. While it's not quite the joyous outcome I'd hoped for, our efforts have nevertheless answered a great many questions. Suffice to say, our plans for saving the first are unlikely to involve the aid of Lord Bothry and his subjects. Come, we must speak with Exarch and chart any course as is far from over.
see, Docile Gate, from Crystarium. And I was playing on my other character. So I know that the main storyline leaves you about 1.2 to either 1.4 million experience points behind level 71, which is what you're going to need very shortly here. But a simple 70 roulette will get you there, pretty sure. I look at I'm just a hair a hair off. These guys should give me some experience and this will be level 71 here shortly. I already talked to Alize. Ah, it is good to be back amongst friends, not to mention my dear sister. I have not seen her for some time. But I gather she is as keen to press on with our plans as I am. And you've seen quite a lot of the first there's yourself now. More than enough to appreciate the scale of the obstacles we face. Let us lay our discoveries before the Exarch and discuss what must be done. There we go. 71. So that was one roulette. And if you're a DPS, that roulette may take some time. I... it... I, it, was a, it was a good long queue. I did other things. Um, so do some of the side quests if you don't want to wait, or do them while you're waiting. So he was level 71. You won't get this quest unless you're 71. And so you return. Have you gained a better understanding of the crisis now faced by the first? Better is not the word I would use. Some lands may have been spared the flood, but the survivors live only to suffer. There seems no end to the horrors inflicted by the Sin Eaters. Indeed. Those abominations are a calamity in their own right. And I can well imagine how hopeless the task of eradicating them must seem to you. But after countless battles and untold sacrifice, we have identified a potential weakness. Sin Eaters are drawn to serve the strongest of their kind, a class of creature we call Light Wardens. And from what we have been able to ascertain, only a handful of these entities exist. Just as an ant colony will perish in the absence of its queen, we believe that the death of a Light Warden will cause the lesser creatures within its sphere of influence to disperse. I have a feeling Yulmul might have something to say about any concerted action we take against these monsters. Vorthra's command over the Sin Eaters is integral to Yulmoran society. In seeming to guarantee his people's safety, it guarantees their obedience. He will not take kindly to us depriving him of such useful allies. Agreed. Thus we will need to occupy or otherwise divert his forces whilst we proceed with the business of eliminating the Wardens. Until we have done so, all other considerations must be set aside if we are to forestall the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Your uncertainty is understandable, given the circumstances. Perhaps a more detailed explanation is in order. To begin at the beginning, then. In the ancient past, a single star was divided into 14 worlds. This is the source, your home. These others are the 13 shards, in whose number we find the first. Though physically separate, they retain a connection to each other, and with the source especially. Now, let us assume that a given element in one of the shards attains abnormal ascendancy. Just as water will flow from the highest point to the lowest, the excess energy will begin trickling into the source.
And such an influx of ether will of course exert a palpable influence. If the element in question were fire, then drought and wildfires might ensue. If it were ice, one might expect the weather to turn bitterly calm. As ether continues to pour in, such phenomena will become more and more extreme, until eventually, a single, untimely event triggers a disaster which cracks the barrier dividing the two worlds. What was once a trickle now becomes a deluge, sweeping the shard along to be rejoined with the source. At the same time, the element which held sway in the shard is unleashed in full, its energies amplifying the original disaster to truly catastrophic proportions. An earthquake thus magnified might strike with enough force to shatter continents. A tidal wave might swell to a size capable of drowning entire nations. These devastating events are what we refer to as umbral calamities. Seven times has a calamity befallen the source. Seven times has a shard been absorbed. At present, the light-drowned realm of the first stands perilously close to meeting the conditions for a rejoining. It is the Sin Eaters who are to blame for the light's continued dominance. In addition to attracting their lesser kin, the Light Wardens I mentioned earlier radiate ether, saturating every corner of their territory with light. Even here in the flood-spared region of Norvrant, their influence is strong enough to banish night from the sky. Thus, if we are to restore balance to the first and head off a potential calamity, it is imperative that we put each and every Light Warden to the sword. We've been doing our best to take the fight to the enemy ever since we first heard the Exarch's explanation. Though we have yet to claim any meaningful victories if truth be told, apart from being confoundingly elusive, the Light Wardens possess a troublesome quality which compelled us to delay our plans until such time as you arrived. Forgive the interruption, my lord, but Holminster Switch is requesting reinforcements. They say the Sin Eaters are attacking in force and the village could soon be overrun. Alert the guard. We should be prepared in case the fighting reaches the Crystarium. You have command of our forces in the field, Captain, but hold off on entering the town until I arrive. That goes for Alphano and Alize as well. My lord. Pray, lend us your strength. Such a fight will provide you with far greater insight than any explanation I could offer. Holminster Switch is in the north of Lakelands, so we had best to make haste with our preparations. In fact, meet me outside the Crystarium at the crossroads, northwest of the Sensor Gate, and I shall lead you there myself.
it really doesn't matter where you go. You can pick the one with the least amount of people. And just all the witnesses to keep it thinned out. Let's see, where is he? I know our dungeon is coming up fairly soon. All set, if we follow this road north, we will arrive at the northern staging point. The village itself lies not far beyond. Quickly now. I love crowded places for some reason. It's exciting. Holminster Switch is past these gates and through the woods. It's not exactly a near neighbor to the Crystarium, but as we occupy the same region, we have built up something of a cooperative relationship. What can we expect inside, Captain? The town is beset by a swarm unlike any we have seen in recent years. I can't do her accent. We did our best to evacuate the villages, but as many as half remain. Judging by the number of eaters present, we have good reason to believe that a light warden leads the attack. How convenient. It seems we'll have a chance to slay a warden sooner than we expected. <laughs> what does that simply slay a warden? Has no one told you what happens if you defeat one of those fiends? They hold more light inside them than all of their underlings put together. It can be struck down, aye, but its essence won't dissipate like the weaker kind. Vile ether will billow outwards and envelop the nearest living being, a reckless young swordswoman perhaps, and turn her into a brand new warden. Ah, well, you can leave that particular quandary to us. I must ask the guard stand down and allow us to engage this leader of eaters alone. I think you should have told us that we'd turn into one. I guess we already know that, huh? Concentrate on the survivors. We must save every life we can. But what if... Understood, my lord. As captain of the guard, however, I will not watch you brave such danger without an escort from our ranks. I insist that I go with you. Very well. Then our warden slaying party shall include myself, the Livelures, Captain Lena, and last but not least, you. I got this. A formal group indeed. Into Holminster we grow. Grow? Once we reach the Light Warden, do not hold back, we strike to kill. You know that guy in Game of Thrones that has that rock disease? Hey! Our dungeon! Go us! This is the new NPC grouping? When forming a party, you'll need to follow the same role restrictions imposed when using the duty finder. Alternatively, alternatively, you can find party members via the duty finder as usual, and complete the instance with fellow players instead. Considering... DPS... Let's see... Form a party and enter Homester Switch with, uh... Lena, Alize, and Crystal Search. All rounder Academian Red Mage. Leave this to me. So Leave this kick to her me. out. Kick her in. My strength is very yours. well. That makes him in. I guess this is your choice. And this is our party. Okay.
Oh, use the duty finder. We actually have to duty find with our... Or we don't, I don't know. <laughs> Popped up after I hit duty finder. Could've been ironically. Oh, Mr. Switch. A little push front in there. Some spiders, scorpions. Egg wardens, I guess. I'm actually pretty glad that, that they're going to be in my party because. I don't want to wait in line. That queue, that DPS queue. Purpley, darkly. No, bear! Not you, bear! They don't care what kind of life they take upon the library. Really? I guess that's fine. Let's eat some food. My butt not going off. Feels like I might get pre pressed before it's not doing that, but it's probably in my head, right? So be it! I'm looking around a lot, so... Not even at the first stop. There's 
no longer TP. Yep. I was playing Mr. Logan earlier and cards have all changed, so there's no need for a TP card or a TP card really yep. before. Unless you had like a samurai or something. going on people. Oops. I'm not even seeing in vain. Somewhat. It's good practice. I'm really out of practice. Infinite TP. So are we gonna be able to take NPCs through all the dungeons? And how do we pick them up? gather behind me and it's a boss. This must be the wound. I guess I start. Balls. Stay away from them. Oh my god, they cross. Okay. Excuse me, god. Focus. Release! Wooden horse. Giant Ailey. Path of Light. Is he also pillory? Notice your characters now have like yellow on their GPS bar. Okay. We're gonna crisscross. So oh my goodness, this might hurt. All right, there we go. Dodge that easy enough. Half of light. Oh, AoE. I'll handle this. All of them. <laughs> that gives you a lot of time to get out of the way if you're not paying attention. Crap. 
Wow, it gave me a lot of time to get out of the way. What happens if one of our members die? Will they die? Crisscross. Which way? There's north, so north. in her butt. We got Ninja 390 hands. Who needs one back? And all these horrific abominations are cheap. A lot of dead people. Hey, someone else pulled. I've got one shot. Some burning hay. Maybe another attacking me. Lots of dead. Oh, there's a copper here. I trust you guys. I believe in you. Uh, a ring of casting. And I'm guessing that you'll... Well, you might not be able to put them in for FC points yet, I'm not sure. Or not FC points, I'm sorry. Company points. Wow, they are so thrashing. Come on, quick. Thrashing the area. Protect 
You see that yellow line? Like, I can see that your HP will turn yellow because it's like telling the healer that this is gonna go away. Like, there's a dot on you. But what is the yellow bar above that? Doesn't show. I have damage up, catalyze, and something that disappeared as soon as I went over it. Ironically. They want us to have all the gear our little hearts could desire. 390 gear. They're already making the 385 they gave us pointless. It's just enough to get us in here if, if he chose to use it. One, two, three, four balls above your head. Okay. Just jumps to each one, and maybe if you're together, that would be very, very bad. Bice the AoE damage. Any of these guns are? Okay. It's not stand in the whatever that is. Falls again. I should go stand on someone and see what happens. They can see me. the forgiven. What? It was Tesling. I didn't even look at her name. Do you really want to kill Tesling? Or she's a huge advocate advocate for not being in pain. They want to meet in the middle. Oh, I see. So they can get out of the middle. No supposed to get away from her because she sucks people in. Or is she not a warden? Are you alright? You've gone pale. Me? Ah, uh, let's see. 
trousers of casting. I didn't look at the other one. Just necklace of healing. One six four vitality, level seventy one. More dead crumpled people. Uh well that sucks. Oh, transform so fast. about all right uh oh that's what i was doing i hit the windows keys with y'all I misspeak a lot. Oh well. Get over it. So again, something's on me. I've galvanized on me. I'm not gonna wait. I know it's gonna be something very silly and stupid.
small Lakeland Lakeland small sword. RDM. Celia, Light Warden. Alright, I see. It looks like a white tiger, but very much not. I won't stand the most of the fight. That's pretty creepy. Very creepy. Alright. Due to a lot of background sound, there'll be no mic. warn you.
Alright, so you do get a item regardless that is just for you and then an axe drop also. Let's try this on. Alrighty. It's releasing its ether. Fall back. We cannot let it touch us. Quickly, my lord, we must with... That will not be necessary, Captain. Though I appreciate your concern. The eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. But now we have a way to contain that corruption. The blessing of light, and the hero who wields it now stands before you. Behold, the monster's power is broken, and the world, twisted by its touch, returns to its rightful form. Is that what I think it is? The night sky, as it should be. Who are you people? You killed a warden, then bathed in its ether as if it were a spring shower and now the sky? The legends are true.
My lord? How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing? For you. You have vanquished the Light Warden of Lakeland, and for the first time in a century, darkness has returned to the mantle of night. Without the ever-present light to sustain them, the Sin Eaters will have no choice but to retreat. Yet our victory is far from complete. Though darkness has fallen here, the other Wardens yet bask beneath burning skies, feasting upon what little life remains. Even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain, that this world might be spared from oblivion. Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. But, be that as it may, I concede it was wrong of me to summon you to this fight against your will. I swear on my life, I will one day atone for that deed, but for the present, I beg you, stay and see this fight to its conclusion. Cast down the Wardens and restore darkness to the first. On behalf of the First, I offer you my deepest thanks. I understand there is much at stake here, Exarch, but why do you risk yourself so readily? It must have been a dangerous drain on your ether to summon even one person across the rift. I do it for my people, of course. To give the Crystarium the tomorrow it deserves. That is true now, yes, but the city had yet to be built when you first called forth the Crystal Tower. I'm simply curious to know what prompted you to commit yourself so completely to this particular course. There are... things which we can ill afford to lose. And... I sensed from the first that I had a part to play in preserving them. <laughs> Forgive me. I fear the events of the day may have taken their toll. Despite appearances, I am an old man. One burdened with many difficult memories, some too painful to recall. Well then, I'm sorry for pressing you. It's a family failing, I'm afraid. <laughs> One which has served us well more often than not. Needless to say, we will continue to fight at your side until the last Sin Eater is defeated. Come then, my warriors of darkness. Let us gather the surviving villagers and make our way back to the Crystarium. Thank you.